You hear a lot of people saying that we shouldn't judge America's founding fathers with the moral standards of today because that would be unfair. It's a different time. But the moral standards of today existed back then. James Otis, the guy who said taxation without representation's tyranny, also wrote the colonists are by the law of nature freeborn, as indeed all men are, white or black. Benjamin Rush, signer of the Declaration of Independence, he said to be deluded into thinking that one race is inferior to another is so foreign to the human mind that the moral faculties, as well as those of the understanding, are debased and rendered torpid by it. Torpid means lifeless. Governor Morris, whose pen wrote the Constitution, said slavery would bring the curse of heaven upon us. Thomas Paine inspired the American Revolution. He called slavery monstrous and slavers desperate wretches. Ben Franklin's friend Ben Lay called slavers the spawn of Satan to their faces. Then there were the men, women, and children enduring forced labor who petitioned numerous courts at the time quoting the Declaration of Independence. So how come it still took millions of people, centuries, to apply what were clear moral standards back then? Vermont passed laws right away during the Revolution. But the rest of the North took another 20 years before they would shut it down. And the calls for moderation made the process brutal. In Pennsylvania, ending slavery applied only to the next generation of Americans. And then they'd face racial murders and cross burnings and riots as slavery just continued to rage on in the South. There are a lot of people who claim that the United States was a leader in establishing freedom for all, but the Haitians were the first to overthrow this crime against humanity. Britain was next, Mexico was next, then France. It cost the sacrifices of a global movement, a civil war that killed 2% of our country, and the assassination of an American president before we could apply what was a clear moral standard from the start. Why? The danger with romanticized, idealized origin stories is they deprive us the perspective and humility that are required to overcome supremacist chosen person delusions. That's the test this country has so far failed. So to the question, wasn't everyone a racist in the 1700s? Just the ones we made into statues. There's an old famous book that says, whatever overcomes a person, to that he is enslaved. A free society can't worship idols of power, greed, cruelty, narcissism, arrogance, without becoming enslaved to our worst instincts. Our ancestors with moral standards were not often cast in stone or iron. And maybe that's not so bad, because they live on in the spirit of our humanity, values that have existed since the dawn of time.